what? Sabbath again? People are going to think I'm doing all the studies on Sabbath because my mom wrote a thesis in a book about it. But seriously, in a world where the Sabbath gets redefined by individuals according to whatever they think works best for them, perhaps we need to look at the Sabbath more closely and scripturally. A rabbi once said, more than Israel keeping the Sabbath, the Sabbath kept Israel. Wow, the Sabbath, God's protection for the week. This is Sabbath School University, and I'm your host, Sarah Mae Colon. Offering information for your mind. Enabling transformation for your heart. Sabbath School U, a weekly dialogue exploring God's Word and its application for today's world. and welcome to Sabbath School University. My name is Sarah Mae Colon and I'm your host for the day. And with me, I have a lovely panel. If you gentlemen wouldn't mind introducing yourselves and telling me if you could learn any language in the world, what language would you learn? And go. Uh, my name is Rashan Abadisari and I'm a medical laboratory student, science student here at Andrews University. Nice. And if I were to learn any language, uh, I think I would be interested in learning uh, Mandarin. Mandarin? Yes. Hmm, that sounds fun. I wouldn't understand a thing you said though. <laughs> and your name? Roshan Ahazanham? What was the last name? It's Roshan Abad Abadasari. Ro okay, Abadasari. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Thomas. Um, hey, Thomas, Thomas Watkins. Um, I'm studying theology here at Andrews. Um, I guess if I were to say, if I had to learn a language, it would be Spanish. Huh. And I know that's like everybody seems to know Spanish now, but I just want to be in the part, crowd. part of the team, you know? No, but you know, that seems pr rather practical because then you'll be able to converse with everyone. So you'll know what's happening. Yeah. All right, cool. Fair enough. I agree. <laughs> My name is Gregory Church. Um, I'm taking international development here at Andrews University. Nice. And the language I would like to continue to learn, like, I really don't know it, um, <laughs> is Arabic. Arabic? Yeah. That's so cool. I don't know any of those languages well, so it's okay. you Where guys should learn we? them all and then teach me. That will be the next step. Anyways, well awesome. I'm really glad that you guys are on the panel today and I hope you will have a great discussion. But to start out with, Greg, would you mind reading our scripture and praying for us? Yeah, sure. Okay. 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 Our scripture today is in Matthew 12, verse 8. Mm -hmm. It says, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Okay. And I'm going to pray in Arabic. Yay, Arabic. <laughs> Okay, let's pray. Barakat Allah fikum al um arraj hadikat amin. Amen. That's awesome. I told you I, I need to learn it. You know what? That's so cool. You know yeah. what? I'm just not good at languages, even though I grew up speaking a ton. So I'm impressed that you even can yeah. get Arabic out. So well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anyways, well, as you know, this week we're studying Lessons 11, which is Sabbath, a gift from Eden. Mm. And so I'm really excited about this topic because, well, like I said before, my mom wrote a book on the Sabbath, so hmm. by default, I like the Sabbath. <laughs> but anyway, so first question, how is the Seventh-day Sabbath tied directly to the creation itself? That's, that's a really good question. Like, I actually was thinking about this a couple a couple days ago, you know, just Sabbath walk, just how is it connected? Mm -hmm. I think that at the Sabbath is like, it's like the finale of the week. Mm -hmm. It's the finale of creation. Like, I don't know if you watch uh, like Circus du Soleil or been to a circus mm -hmm. or been to like a fireworks show. Yeah. At the end of the beauty of everything, at the end of all the acts, you have the finale. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's like, you know, God gave it his all and then he rested. Then mm -hmm. he, that was the finale of the week. That's, that, that's awesome. what it all meant. And so I thought that was really cool. Just think of it as a finale and, mm -hmm. and that really spoke to me. Yeah, absolutely. And how often do we celebrate it as the finale? Yeah. It is a celebration. It really is a celebration. That's mm. awesome. Awesome. You kind of look like you were going to say something. You got to like no, yeah. I, no, pondering it's, thoughts it's not going way you on. said, especially with the part of going in mm -hmm. with all you got, um, especially with us being students. Mm -hmm. You know, we have tests. We have all these things going on throughout <laughs> the week. And you can just be tired. And yeah. then everybody's like, man, it's Friday. You just got to push a little bit harder. And then mm -hmm. the finale. 
go into rest. I know, and I think when you're in school, or actually, I don't know, I was out working for a bit, but when Friday night hits, oh. it's the best thing ever yes, because you're like, well, time. I don't have to do homework because yeah. I'm not supposed to. So you can't <laughs> yeah. be a slacker at that point. Right. <laughs> Every other night you feel guilty, but that right. night it's good. Yeah. That's awesome. Any other thoughts on that? Actually, well, it's part of the seven days. It took a whole day that mm -hmm. God set aside. Like one day God did a few things and then another day he did a few other things. Right. But on that day, he only did Sabbath. That was it. Mm -hmm. And now he's got his whole creation and he gets to be with it. And it's like um, a God who put everything into existence on that planet then wanted to spend time with it. Mm -hmm. and. Maybe it was part of creating a sense of relationship, how, right. how important that is to him. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes right into the next thought. Way to lead it in. <laughs> Why did Adam and Eve need the Sabbath in an unfallen world? Because I've often thought about that because, you know, we're exhausted. We're going through a week falling apart. And by the time Sabbath gets here, you finally get to hang out with the people you want to hang out with and like right. spend some time chilling out. And, but there is none of that back then. So why was Sabbath created? Well, I don't know, in my opinion, um, <laughs> when you spend time with someone, it's not just when there's something wrong. Mm. So even before the, word, the world fell, God still needed to spend time with us and we still needed to spend time with Him. And even if, uh, like, if He knew that we were going to fall, mm -hmm. then I would assume that He wanted to set set apart that day so that, you know, in retrospect, we had, we had the habit down mm -hmm. that we'd be spending time with him. And um, also, it reminds us that we're the creation and God is the creator. Mm -hmm. I've heard somebody say that on the Sabbath day, it's a time when you get to realize that God is in control of your life mm -hmm. and that you're not in control of everything around you and you can just let go you know you have to control your work you have to control mm -hmm. how you do in school but on the sabbath you don't have to yeah that's really cool yeah it's nice i know i'm kind of a control freak sometimes by mistake i'm actually not even that intense but for some reason i need control of my life and so it's kind of cool sometimes to think all right god here you go you know like yeah. kind of <laughs> But it's cool that he gives us that break. Awesome. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, you know what? Like, I see my relationship with God, and I think that it's it's like a relationship that you would have with your, you know, with your parents or your mm -hmm. fr your friends or like maybe you know your girlfriend boyfriend. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. I mean, just say I'm I know I have a girlfriend. We'll be texting mm -hmm. throughout the week. You know, we'll be communicating all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. You know, mm -hmm. but. At sometimes in a relationship, we set apart time just to spend one on one with each other. Mm -hmm. What that might be going to the mall for the whole day or mm -hmm. going sightseeing for the whole day. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. Like even in an unfallen world, an unfallen world, even though Adam and Eve were always in constant communication yeah. with God, they needed they needed that one day just to spend with Him. No animals. No just lounging, <laughs> no, no animals. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> like no just lounging around. Right. Just them and God. That's very I think cool. every relationship needs that 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 personal time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go ahead. And to piggyback with that, it also says, "I'm like Adam walked with God. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. he walked with them in the cool of day. You know, and like you said, with the relationship, it's all about the relationship. And I believe that the Sabbath is, you know, something we should look forward to mm -hmm. as a day of rest. And you know, be triumphant throughout the week. You went in as hard as you got, and now it's time to spend time with God, mm -hmm. the relationship. So it's pretty yeah. good. Yes, you in the back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to interject something else in there. You know how um, God isn't just interested in our spiritual well-being. Right. You know, mm -hmm. things that we eat, things that we do affect our spirituality. Like, they affect our mood. If I'm mm -hmm. going to sleep in all day, I'm going to be groggy. <laughs> and then I'm or not going to be I? listening in class. <laughs> or, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Um, how some foods are heavier than others. Mm -hmm. And, like, there are several different aspects of us. There's the mental, mm -hmm. physical, and mm -hmm. spiritual. 
Mm -hmm. And I guess relational too, you can put okay. it in there. Right. But anyway, <laughs> so with the Sabbath, it's not just the physical rest. It's not just the right. spiritual rest. It's also, I don't know, it's like holistic health. Mm -hmm. And God put that in place saying, I'm not just interested in in time with you. I'm not mm -hmm. just interested in your spirituality. Like, like all these things, I'm interested in everything about you. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. And I think for me, I really appreciate that image mm. because I think the healthiest relationships are the ones that you can do almost anything yeah. with. Yeah, like, definitely. My brother is a good example. My brother and I are very different. <laughs> but yet at the same time, we have like touch points that are similar. So we can do all these different things. Like we both like going mountain biking. So we'll go mountain biking together. But then sometimes we both like just read in the corner or watch a movie together or do, you know, whatever. And so our relationship is much healthier because we can do all these different things. Yeah. You know, it's a healthy, well-rounded. It's not like we only watch movies when we right. hang out right. and there is no conversation. So There's boring. no, you know, but it's like you continue to build relationships when you hang out with people or with and do different things. I guess what I'm saying. I'm not very good at articulating things right now, no, so we're just gonna going. keep going. <laughs> but that's a very beautiful thought um, that it brings a more holistic view of things. Um, what behaviors and statements by Jesus tell us about his concept of the Sabbath? Because I know we as humans tend to interpret the Bible as we wish. <laughs> but what did Jesus say about it? Man, um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, you uh, you go to Luke chapter four, verse mm -hmm. 16, and you know, and it says, uh, it says that he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as mm -hmm. his custom was. See, mm -hmm. it was his custom to uh, mm -hmm. also spend time with his father right. on the Sabbath. And so what did he do? It was his custom. It was something that he did over and over. So when you have the word, you can't really interpret it, as you say, but sometimes we make that mistake, mm -hmm. you know? And um, another one in, in chapter six, uh, chapter six of the same book, mm -hmm. you have him healing the withered, the withered man's hand, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of times we want to try to put cages on the Sabbath, but you right. can do good on the Sabbath, you right. know? Is it wrong for someone to, someone like, has a blown out tire on the road and you pick them up, take them to the gas station, help them out? It's not, it's nothing wrong with those, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. good to do good on the Sabbath, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's true because I think so often we get caught up in the rules mm. that we lose the joy of Sabbath. Yes. I remember I was, I'm in the seminary and so I remember talking to someone about this where they were like, well, on Sabbath, I have to do this, this, and this, and this, and it's almost sundown. I'm so stressed. I haven't gone shopping mm. yet for, you know, food and I haven't cleaned everything and I have people coming over tomorrow. And the list was like a nightmare for me. And I'm just watching their mouth move, just right. like, and they're freaking out in front of me. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, so here's a concept. Don't clean. <laughs> and just hang out, you know, like make a simpler meal, don't worry about it. They're like, but it's Sabbath, it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And it was like this version of Sabbath that was so oppressive. Mm -hmm. And we talked for like an hour about it. And I was like, dude, you're a wow. seminarian. Like, you're yeah. supposed to grasp what this is for us. This is to celebrate, this is to bond and have fun. It's great. And it's a day to refresh yourself, not to totally destroy your well-being. Yeah. And we get so caught up in the rules. And I think Jesus is really good about pointing out the focus of Sabbath. Yeah. Sometimes he broke the rules a little bit, but they were for good reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying go out there and break all the rules, Probably but the you rules know. Of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about that. Mm. But yeah, so I think it's essential. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, well, what you, what you were just saying, is it possible that sometimes we take it and make it a burden? Uh, yeah. We make it a burden that Jesus says, <laughs> take upon me. He says, what well, his yoke is easy and his burden right. is light. And so sometimes we make things so complicated when it should just be easy. Yeah. You know, God is just saying, look, spend time with me. Do all you did all you had time to do everything you had to do throughout the week. Now it's just mm -hmm. time to spend time, relax, unwind. Yep. You know, and I think sometimes we, we complicate things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, to make a point yeah. off of what Thomas said, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we use the rules a lot more than we use the principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus Jesus, in my opinion, was very principle based. Right. He wasn't rules based. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in that aspect of it, we tend to follow the rules, you know, do this, like, you know, dress up. And even though these rules aren't official, we know that they exist. Right. You know, go to church, don't do anything after sunset, you know, <laughs> those, those sort of rules. But the principle is, Sabbath's all about the worship, the mm -hmm. time with you and, 
with right. just you and God. Right. And we sometimes tend to miss that because those principles seem to always be bogged down in those rules. Right. And I remember for me, again, I think I'm a spoiled kid in this aspect because my parents actually made Sabbath fun. Mm-hmm. I was so never, awesome. yeah, I wasn't the kid that was like, oh man, it's Friday night. I was like, what? yes, it's Friday <laughs> night. We're going to have charades and we're going to sing and like do all this weird family That's stuff. Awesome. And like we eat good food. We always had like a special drink. It was like a mm. smoothie, right. but it was like the special drink. It was literally like a banana and chocolate <laughs> <laughs> like in a blender. <laughs> Woo. But my point is, Sounds is that good. my parents, when, whenever there was something going on that we wanted to go to, because our community wasn't Adventist necessarily. Mm. Right. they would come up with something better mm. as opposed to saying no you can't do that it's sabbath mm. you know they'd be like well that's really fun but how about tonight we're gonna have something special we're mm. going to eat cinnamon rolls wow. <laughs> you know and we're like yes you know like instantaneous joy you know yeah. and it's like about making sabbath right. your own and celebrating it for what it is as mm. opposed to like getting bogged down by all these things that have nothing to do mm. <laughs> with God or the actual essence of Sabbath. Right. Mm. I think what you just said just hit me so hard. Mm-hmm. It's a celebration. Mm-hmm. It's a joyous event. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, I think like every Sabbath, if we were in heaven, I, can, I can't imagine how fun it would be. Like all the angels <laughs> just singing. Like, it would be so fun. Talk about kumbaya on a round. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. But we just traditionalize it so much and we miss out the fun aspect of Sabbath. Absolutely. Mm. And if we thought of it as a celebration, I think Sabbath would be on a whole different level to us. Absolutely. And we're all young. I'm going to include myself in that one. Um, and I think that our generation is losing the joy of Sabbath. Mm. Because we come after a generation that was so like in the rules, they're kind of grumpy about it. Right. And so then they're like, hey, we're grumpy, so therefore you should hate it. <laughs> Right. Or it's like extremes, not all of them, I'm generalizing. But right. so we have this weird understanding of Sabbath as young people. And so I just, I think it's interesting that you guys are talking about it so happily. Like, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I think, I think another reason for that is because we've been, not necessarily been put down in a sense, mm-hmm. but as in the rules of Sabbath and how to celebrate Sabbath were dictated to us by our, our church leaders mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. by our parents and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we kind of, and I'm not saying that they missed the point. That's the way, you know, they right, worshiped. They were taught. That's, that's the way they were taught. Right, absolutely. And there were, I believe everyone has a different way of worshiping. Mm-hmm. And not to say that my way is better than yours or your way is better than Thomas's. We just have to. Maybe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, burn. I think we just need to find our own special way of celebrating with God. Right. That's that's my philosophy. Absolutely. And I mean, God helps us out with that. So yeah. how are God's creative and redemptive power related to all of this? You know? Um, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Cross the table. No, um, it ties very well into what we were just talking about. You know, the joy of Sabbath. How mm-hmm. I, we were talking about how the generation before us has found a very rigid way of seeing the Sabbath and I kind of see that as a lack of faith, a lack of trust in God and I'll explain. Okay, yeah. I'll explain. You might want to do that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might sound heretical here. Yeah. No, in all seriousness. Um, you know how when you're talking to somebody about the faith that you have, um, mm-hmm. sharing with them what it means to you and you're watching maybe a a child grow in their spiritual walk with Christ and you want to make sure that they understand things exactly how you understand it because you don't want them to slip up because that would be bad Mm -hmm. and it's like you're worrying about something that God says he's taking care of right? that God is always working on the hearts of people whether we're there or not and I've learned that, and I still have a hard time with this, you get me wrong, it's really <laughs> hard to trust God like Absolutely. how we should with the salvation of the people that we love. Mm-hmm. It's hard to go and say, the best thing I can do for this person is to pray for them mm-hmm. and say what God has put on my heart to say when they're ready mm-hmm. instead of being like, Oh no, what if something happens tomorrow? Ah! Yeah. You know, freaking out about something that God has said, I'll take care of. Mm. I'm taking care of this person. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. Right. And 
with the Sabbath, it's like we don't trust God enough to teach us the same way that He taught people in the past, Right. Mm -hmm. people in the Bible. He taught them all of these truths. He mm -hmm. taught people that we learn these truths from. Right. We, we have the ability to have an intimate relationship with God where He can tell us mm -hmm. these truths if we're studying our Bibles, mm -hmm. like right. if we're really interested in understanding Absolutely. this stuff and willing for God to, to change us. Right. And so to stick to rules is good because it gives us a direction right. for like what's Momentum. been done in the past right. is probably pretty safe, but it's a relationship. It's right. not a computer. So we should, we should default to learning those truths on our own right. instead of doing exactly the thing, exactly the things that the people before us did. Right. And I think the beauty of that is, is that God's creative, as it was stated, yeah. you know, He has a plan. Mm -hmm. And if we just trust Him a little bit, and if we let His creative brilliance come out and His power be truly shown, then it doesn't matter what we're doing anyways, you know, throughout the whole process, like mm -hmm. you were talking about. Sometimes you want to convert people on the spot <laughs> almost, I want to save you, you know. But that's... <laughs> Maybe your job is just to be there, yeah, you know, right. to be a friend, to be supportive, to experience something together. And I think that's part of the joy of it. And so I like that. Yeah. Coming back to the whole point of how God's creator and redemptive at the mm -hmm. same time, I honestly believe that we, do, we don't serve a God who's sitting up on a throne, you know, just looking over the earth and saying, you do this, you do this. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe that we're serving a God who's really cool. That He's creative, mm -hmm. and He's He has an imagination, and mm -hmm. He He's He's very relatable. Yep. He's exciting. Yep. I, I don't believe I serve a boring God, not at all. And if you look at it as redemptive, at His redemptive power, the way He redeems us, mm -hmm. it wasn't boring at all. Right. He's like, you know what, guys? You know, you, I know you guys sinned, you guys messed up, but here's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be creative. He was like, right away, he had a mm -hmm. plan. He was creative, right. and he said, I'm gonna send down my son. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, he's gonna die for you and take mm -hmm. away your sins. Mm -hmm. And that's how creative my God is. Mm -hmm. I think, like, I don't know, wow. but I'm very, I'm into like, I like watching movies and stuff. And one of my favorite actors out there is uh, Tom Cruise, let's say that. Okay. All right. And so, the thing is, I've heard about Tom Cruise, and you know, people told me I've, I've watched his movies, I watch him, you know, I've read, it, I've read some of his stuff and what he does and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I've ever, never actually met Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. But I just say I meet him, and he's a really, you know, cool guy. That'd be mm -hmm. really cool. I think that's how God is. We read about mm -hmm. him. We know him. We people like, you know. I'm just trying to bring him. God's a million times better than Tom Cruise. He's <laughs> infinitely better. Good than Good save. No, but, I'm just kidding. But we read him in the Bible. We read about mm -hmm. people's how they experience him. We talk to our friends. Right. But I think when I meet God, I think it's gonna be. He, I think he's gonna be like the coolest person ever. He's right. gonna be so creative. We're gonna be like so connected. And I think and we've definitely confined him. Definitely. By our belief systems, not saying that our belief systems are bad, but I think sometimes we put God in this little tiny box and yeah. we're like, okay, this is as big as you're allowed to be, so <laughs> yeah. so you know, great. and it's like, but it's it's the same thing we do with the Sabbath, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. we confine it so much that we're not able to enjoy it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so there needs to be some sort of balance and experience going throughout Absolutely. the process. So Because unfortunately... We're finite beings mm -hmm. and we don't realize that we're dealing with an infinite yeah. God. Who, whose, whose possibilities mm -hmm. and love is just endless. Absolutely. And on that topic, you know, how can the Sabbath help us better understand our absolute need for God's grace mm. uh, for everything in our lives? Because I know sometimes we, we get way off topic anyways. And so, like, how is God related to all of this? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward pause. Anyone? Not really. <laughs> Anybody? Um, I was thinking of... It might be a little bit off topic, but um, I was thinking of how this kind of applies to how I keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, I know I read somewhere an author, Ellen White, she was talking about how, you know, you don't need to go and you don't need to go to church every week. Like mm -hmm. there should be a week where you go into nature and you spend time with God in nature because that's mm -hmm. one of the ways that God presents himself. You know, he mm -hmm. created nature, not just us, 
and even though it's fallen, we're fallen, right. it still shows characteristics of his so love. So there's diversity. There's mm -hmm. diversity. Okay. Yeah, and that's a good thought because I think uh, you guys touched on it a little bit that Sabbath is a celebration and Sabbath is a unique thing each week and it's something that you can build a relationship with God on. So it's kind of cool to think, you know, maybe this week, maybe it needs to be me and my Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I need to go personally and read my Bible and spend time in it, or maybe I need to go into nature. That's Actually, cool that. sometimes I do that. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Let's say, um, for instance, I'm like throughout the whole week, I'm really tired, and you know, I sleep and I wake up and I say, you know, I need to kind of just, you know, I want to focus on a certain topic myself. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. I need that something I might be struggling with. Right. Let me focus on that topic, and uh, you know, sit down with my word and go into it and dig in. Um, so like what you were saying, you know, sometimes we could have a day where we just kind of go out, you know, and just kind of focus on our relationship with God. Because once again, sometimes when we're always going out to the church or mm -hmm. anything like that, not saying that don't go, you need to go. But sometimes you need to just refocus and see where you're right. at with God, you know, personally. Right. And I think there's a difference between the church is there to be a community of believers. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's times when you need to step away mm -hmm. and you need to refocus yourself. And then that way when you go back to the community, you have something to offer. <laughs> because fresh. sometimes... Especially for <laughs> introverted people. <laughs> exactly. Well, we have one more minute and I just want to ask a practical question. What are some specific ways you can learn to rejoice in the Sabbath? Mm. Dun dun dun! Practical question. Thirty seconds. Anyone? I think, and this <laughs> might be, you know, if we take our minds off of ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we find this in Isaiah fifty-eight. We take our minds off ourselves. If you take your foot from doing your own pleasure, mm -hmm. then you will be joyous. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy. Right. You'll find joy, and I think that's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You know. He wasn't always thinking about himself, but he had joy in healing. Right. And sometimes we can, you know, when we focus on other people and how we can help them, Good. it can actually be a delight. Right. Well, that's a great way to end, you know, maybe focusing on our communities and our friends and people and getting out there. Well, guys, we are out of time. But thank you so much for being on the show. And you were awesome. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us here on the show. You can start a discussion on our Facebook page or write us at www.sabbathschoolu.org. That's www.sabbathschool, the letter U, dot O-R-G. Bible study is an inspiring adventure. It's for both the head and for the heart. And may yours grow in God's spirit. I'm Sarah Mae Clone. We'll see you next time on Sabbath School University.